a sea change masterpiece or fucking five have come down the pike of the preceding decade, anyone at all locked into the Rageaholic channel is keen to the scent of a finely formed turd, and as such, is well aware the self-same industry pinched more poo than Billy Idol cutting his coke with Dolco Lax. After an impressive peak in 2007, the aughts ended at a creative and commercial nadir, with 2009 marking a demonstrable plummet in the profitability of gaming, the media nevertheless stubbornly refused to label it what it was. A crash. This in spite of sweeping layoffs and multiple AAA publishers exchanging their mystery boxes for cardboard ones. To make matters worse, this condition continued, at least in a software context, well into the PS4 and Xbox One's otherwise impressive lifespan. In short, the shit floweth eternal in the 2010s, and while it adjusted its approach in Angstrom or two at the latter half of the decade, dog shit souffle was the soup of the day. You can cry and caress your copy of the shitty game du jour you jackasses pretended was actually decent all you goddamn like. Shit sucked. So time to don your hip waders, because we're about to traverse the fucking Ganges of gaming. Top five turds of 2019? Nay, shitbird. Sack up for the top five turds of the 2010s. Mark my motherfucking words, gaming history will record the 2010s as the decade where the MMORPG died. Whatever the world running fuck the fagaloons who now pretend that several massive updates later the 14th Final Fantasy is suddenly good. Sorry shit dicks, at absolute best it's still merely passable. At launch, Final Fantasy 14 got a critical commercial dicking and deserved it. Cockeyed controls, bewildering button layout, more frustrating grind than a Catholic titty bar, however you might like it today. In 2010, it all added up to awful. And no patch on the planet or all the apologia in the universe will change what this was at launch. One of the worst games of the 2010s, hands the fuck down. Such a leaning tower of turd, in fact, that Naoki Yoshida, who ultimately assumed the sorry mantle of remaking this into a playable product, later out and out admitted the team had been singularly focused with the fucking graphics, all but ignoring the gameplay, story, variety, and quote, we assumed it could all be fixed with fucking patches. Bit of a problem there, princess. One glance at Janice Dickinson's face confirms not everything can be fixed in fucking post, and Final Fantasy XIV was no exception. Principled bunch that they were, gamers were so indescribably fucking furious with Squeenix that they immediately proved him correct by purchasing and apologizing for a game that should have been complete from the fucking beginning! Hey, what's that shit I always say about gamers deserving the industry they're stuck with? To make matters worse, between the boatloads of yen flushed down the fucking shitter to make this steaming sack of feculence look fucking presentable, to canceling, remaking, and re 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 remaking Final Fantasy XV at around the same time, soon enough, Squeenix were selling blood to pay the water bill. The solution to their self-imposed financial travails? Blame the butt-fucking West. It couldn't be that we banked on a franchise that was already getting stale in the early aughts, abruptly attempted to change it from the ground up and wound up beshitted and bankrupt as a result. No! It's the godless, filthy, pale-faced fucking round eyes in their excellent Deus Ex reboot. More weebs for the weeb throne! Fortunately for the Final Fantasy franchise, it'd be all sunshine, roses, and ream jobs for the remainder of the decade. R right If you're noting a recurrent theme here, what with the games as service snow job, commercial collapse, and consequent corporate apology tour, followed by more patches than the fucking AIDS quill, congrats on having a functioning occipital cortex. But no such shit show was quite so spectacular as the Fallout 76 saga. What the farm fresh fuck were they thinking? Fallout? with fucking multiplayer. Cause I know when I was cruising around post-apocalyptopia shotgunning the shit out of raiders with goddamn dog meat, my only abiding thought was, what can be done to make me feel less fucking unique? I know, maybe I can pal around with a small army of other faded fucking heroes of the wasteland and Fallout Scrolls Online. For the moment we chomped down on this copper light cupcake, it was obvious what the fuck it was gonna be. Which I hasten to note, in no way dissuaded the Obliviati and Polygon from proffering a preemptive apology. If you don't like it, you don't have to play. 
quiet, they shrieked. Hey, thanks for the vote of confidence my own free fucking will, wank shaft. Remember that the next time you advocate taxing the tits off the electorate for a Medicare system we don't want. It's clearly going to be patched. Hey, let me file that one away at a great big manila envelope labeled no fucking shit. But here's a query. If you know you'll have to patch it to make it presentable, how's about, oh, finishing the fucking game first? Particularly since the game was half finished beforehand. I mean, look at the fucking thing. It's got more Fallout 4 assets than Fallout 4. Could you say that like Dr. Frankenstein? Igor, fetch me the brain. Sorry. Making it the latest example in a sad, sappy tome entitled Todd Howard Doesn't Make New Games Anymore. Oh, he'll re-release them for a fucking fact. Fallout 4's on all the modern gen consoles, and he'll no doubt get the next gen Janet Jackson facelift for the PS5, while Skyrim's been on every platform from 360 to Tiger Handheld, and Fallout 76, while ostensibly a new title, is, as we all suspected, little more than a multiplayer expansion for the fourth Fallout they decided against, including in the full release that, frankly, should have stayed fucking shit can between the upending the RPG mechanics of the franchise, allowing players to change absolutely everything about their character on the fucking fly. Nothing says make choices of mortal consequence, quite like going from Gollum to Kimbo fucking Slice with the push of a button. If that sounds awful, stop underselling it. It's fucking awful. Which is why a year later, the 76 refers to the number of remaining players. Next. Oh, Eidos Montreal, authors of both the best game of the 2010s and arguably the worst. You know how I unloaded on Squeenix for blaming their Western divisions for their latter-day fiduciary failings while funneling fucking cash at multiple failing Final Fantasy projects? Well, meet Teeth. 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 It's Teeth. Teeth. You are Master Teeth. A long-awaited reboot of the legendary steampunk stealth series so aggressively goddamn bad, I almost want to take it all back. In fairness, the top-down, tone-deaf micromanagement of the Nipponese nut hammocks that run Square Enix are all over every inch of this game, from turbo cool kills to a placeholder logo literally pronounced as Thiforif to see-through walls clairvoyant vision, this game was fucking forged in a focus group's narrow asshole. To such an obnoxious extent that Eidos Montreal's founder, Stéphane Dastus, split in outright disgust to form an all-new studio that's currently working on what looks like an EVE Online killer. And people were starting to say this would be a beautiful launch title. I said, okay, I understand your enthusiasm, but do you realize that we are supposed to be shipping in, I don't know, let's say a year away from now? Thief was going from a three skew to a five skew. Jesus. But to completely fill this this potential is not a year's worth of, of work. It has to be thought out. It has to be from day one. If you're one of the fellow unfortunates who played this perversion of all things Thief at launch, you know far too fucking well what happened next. Thief 4 was awkwardly wedged into the launch window for Xbox One and PS4, filleted 50 dicks in rapid succession as a result, with sales to match, and as such, the greatest stealth series ever made is now devalued and defunct for the foreseeable future. Even at its absolute best, the entirety of Thief is one endless procession of puerile reinterpretations of its original majesty. Oh, you want light and shadow? Stealth? Have some binary-ass bullshit where you're either lit up like Shanghai on Chinese New Year or outright invisible because you flipped a magic fucking stealth switch. Oh, you want your light gem, jackass? Have the ambiguous bullshit marble of doom, dipshit. And don't forget, even if you do turn off the only halfway fucking useful method of determining your visibility, you can always use the goddamn glaucoma vision on the edge of the screen to immediately ascertain your unsightly status. And so you myopically mope your mascara-bedecked leather gimp-looking emo ass through vague grayscale pseudo-shadows, golem hands Kimbo, unable to evade your own purple fucking fart cloud as you clumsily traverse one unctuously linear locale after another in pursuit of the lone door in the game that doesn't slam the shut but fucking hind you and lock you into a loading zone. Sweet cleansing hellfire! What a fucking ass mass. Next! Ha <laughs> ha! 
hey, look! Another games as service shit, Chinook. The slow motion implosion of the once badass Bioware has been simultaneously the most comedic and depressing occurrence in all of entertainment. How the dick did the studio that gave us KOTOR, Jade Empire, Neverwinter Nights, and the original Mass Effect degenerate into Dragon Age 2, Star Wars The Old Republic, and everything after the original Mass Effect? Sure, there was that momentary uptick in Dragon Age Inquisition, but to hear the devs themselves tell it, they tripped over their own lady dicks, tumbled off a cliff face, and accidentally landed on the only halfway decent release of the decade. And even that had more issues than Game Informer. But even in my weapons-grade cynicism, not in 19 attempts could I have accurately predicted its supersonic descent to the bargain bin in a hail of sub-6 out of 10 review scores, its miserable Metacritic score only barely edging out Fallout 76 in the process. What places it higher on my personal list than the most recent Bethesda bullshit is the sheer volume of sky splitting hype. We canceled a fucking Dragon Age sequel for this. Anthem was to be the title to finally silence all naysayers of EA's acquisition of the company and proclaim aloud, we don't need Mass Effect motherfucker, and Andromeda's an aberration. We're Bioware, bitch, and we're just as good with a new IP as we are milking the merry fuck out of the games that didn't eat a plate of boiled butthole. And then... Anthem actually arrived. Big, boring, and buggier than a Charlie Sheen blood test, it went up like a wet fart. For fuck's sake, if you exited in the main menu on Xbox One, the console stubbornly, and wisely, refused to go back to it, while PS4s were actually bricking themselves to avoid playing the game again. To them I say, where were you when Life of Black Tiger was spinning in my tray, you twat? Build as the destiny killer, it instead killed any chance Bioware would have a fucking destiny. Promises of seamless co-op, 11 teen ass loads of post-launch content, and an engaging amalgam of RPG and shooter utterly evaporated as gamers at last stepped into a big, empty world nearly as wide as your yawn while playing it. In fairness, if their goal was to be Destiny, which is to say an overhyped, underwhelming open-world wankfest, you ain't far from the fucking bullseye here. It just so happens Destiny is shit, and now so are you. Indeed, for the corporate cockbag steering the ship since John Ricciatello was scapegoated by the EA shareholders, I'm sure Anthem checked all the right boxes on their long list of vapid but bankable bullshit. It's just a pity they didn't ask the actual gamers to write the fucking checklist. Which brings us to the biggest bomb of them all. Oh, there's no shortage of candidates from any number of disparate genres, mind you. Fuck, even niche genres like racing or fucking football might make the list here if we weren't weighing for unbridled long-term tanking. Yet in the hollowed howls of gamerdom, when I peered back through the decade at our back and beckoned an answer, what is the worst piece of shit I played in the last 10 years? There was but one worthy reply. <laughs> That's right, as awful as it is to watch Bioware go ass over elbow from CRPG greatness to games as service sleep aid, no series has suffered a more prolonged plummet than Final Fucking Fantasy. FF14 was shit for a fucking fact, folks, but it's an MMO. Shit, worst case scenario, you call it a mulligan, pretend it ain't canon, and crank out a single player follow up. But FF14 was a mere floor show before Lucky. 13. For Final Fantasy had grown fat, flabby, and lazy after 20 years taking the Hongo Files milk money. Let's be real. Those Final Fantasy games we played as kids and grew up goddamn loving? They're shit! Fuck, I said as much in the second ever installment of the Rageaholic. Even the Sacred Seventh entry has more holes than a Hasidic bedsheet and twice the quantity of Weeaboo ejaculate. Final Fantasy XIII is what happens when a formula that's already overrated is taken to its logical narcoleptic conclusion. When all you have to do to sell games is shit shiny graphics, linear levels, and an endless procession of epicene animal waves to the fucking screen to print payola for two decades, guess what the fuck they're gonna make for fucking Ever. Between interminable cutscenes and a compulsory auto battle system that seem to silently resent the player's very existence, all I could ask is how long is the game planning to jerk itself off exactly? When did Final Fantasy go from one winged angel to one armed bandit? And then it hit me. It was always that way. 13 is absolutely every awful thing about Final Fantasy taken to its logical extreme, and for damn near two decades, you rewarded them for it. In my Final Fantasy 13 review, I asked the amorphous query, why? It's the answer, which I will now quote. Why is this game so terrible? Because they removed all semblance of interactivity, dropped you into a story without narrative or emotional no context, context, and bombarded, bombarded you with overlong, overlong cutscenes. Why did Square Enix do all of those things? 
While I'd love to say it's probably because Square Enix are hatching an elaborate plot to topple the world economy by demoralizing, demoralizing the, populace the populace with expo expositional pedantry in candor, it's probably just because Squeenix figured that a more linear approach would serve their story better. Okay, then why did they feel the need to feature the story so prominently? Uh, because their characters need to say things. Why does a game need characters that say things? Mm, because Square Enix needs something to hang their official licensed Squeenix jewelry off of. Why? Because fanboys will buy literally anything vaguely related to this series. So, the truth comes out. It's you! You're the problem! Well, fucker, you should be ashamed of yourself for Final Fantasy 13 because this game is absolutely horrid. Unquote. I was right at the time, and a decade later, with a franchise awkwardly aping Western CRPGs and a half-assed, how do you do, fellow kids, Hail Mary? Guess what? I'm still fucking right. Hurts like a shot put to the testes, don't it? I'm Razor Fist. God. Fucking speed.